In last night's series opener with the Dodgers, starting pitching was as stingy as Uncle Scrooge on Christmas Day as just one San Diego run was enough to win it. Tonight may offer more of the same as Padres starter Greg Maddox has a teeny tiny 1.71 ERA in his last three starts against Los Angeles. Hey, 50 bucks says San Diego wins game one of the series with two hits. Game two of the series, Dodgers and Padres. Next. This June battle for first place in the NL West continues. Welcome downtown for game two of the series, the visiting Los Angeles Dodgers and your two-time National League Western Division champion, San Diego Padres. Alongside Tony Gwynn, Matt Vaskersian, welcome back downtown. The Padres win the pitcher's duel yesterday, and in the remainder of this series, back-to-back -back left handers thrown at San Diego's lineup by the Dodgers. It's unusual to say that the Dodgers starting a rotation offers a left-hander at all. This is a team who at one point won almost 700 starts in the 90s without a lefty. And in fact, since Fernando Valenzuela left, Tony, left-handed starters have been few and far between. Yeah, they have. And, and, but this kid, Randy Wolf, has come over from Philadelphia. And you can see two months into the season, he's already got seven wins and working his way you know, up this list of guys like Ish Ishihi and Odalis Perez. Seven wins already, I think, is, is more than they could have expected from him. And he's pitched really well. And so the Padres really have their hands full tonight with a guy who's very crafty uh, with the baseball. Well, pitching certainly was a key yesterday for both teams. One of the keys for San Diego in the win was a late stolen base. In fact, the Padres are 14 and 6 this year when stealing a base. Yeah, and you see from the numbers, they're very successful when they do decide to steal. Uh, Russell Brannion's stolen base last night really set up. Uh, Marcus Giles base hit to win the game you know only been caught eight times but they only have attempted 29 so uh, when they do decide to go they're being very successful but the Padres really don't run a whole lot and they're picking their spots Russell Brandon picked a great spot last night to steal a base scored the winning run and it was enough for them to win Saquon starting pitching matchup tonight we mentioned the left-hander on the mound for Los Angeles it's Randy Wolf already in search of his eighth winner of the year for San Diego, Greg Maddox, outstanding his last time out and outstanding his last handful of starts against the Dodgers. Good to have you along tonight. It's game two of the series. The Padres try to extend their lead over the Dodgers in the West. Baseball is coming up next. Welcome back to Petco Park. Game two of the series, Padres and Dodgers. We get you right to Grady Little's Dodgers starting lineup brought to you by Rico. Move your ideas forward with Rico Dependability. Pierre Fercal, Garcia Parra, Kent Gonzalez and Martin, Ethier Abreu and Wolf rounded out for L.A. Same one through eight the Dodgers offered yesterday, only tonight's matchup. Right-hander Greg Maddox making his 12th start of the year for San Diego. Greg's season line brought to you by the injury and accident attorneys at Pacific Law Center. Nothing and one the count to Juan Pierre as we're underway downtown tonight. A ball and a strike to the L.A. leadoff hitter. We mentioned Maddox and his great success against the Dodgers in his last three starts. Of course, L.A. one of his former employers. And Maddox has fared historically quite well against the three teams that he used to pitch for the Dodgers being one of those and he's in front of Juan Pierre a ball and two strikes tonight. No I'm not surprised that Greg Maddox pays a lot of attention sitting on the bench watching his team and the opposition. And he's just a lot of fun to watch pitch. Pierre slaps the one and two foul the ball and two strikes it remains. Maddox last started on Thursday in Pittsburgh he didn't get a decision in the uh, four to two 11 inning victory for San Diego that's the game Mike Cameron won with the 11th inning home run just misses hitting Pierre there two balls and two strikes but in that game Greg was very effective six and two thirds gave up only two runs only one of them earned struck out four walked but one. And a bouncing ball for Adrian Gonzalez starts him tonight one gone. Checking out San Diego defensively tonight. They're sponsored by Ocean's 11 Casino. Join him for the famous Sunday brunch. Only seven bucks. And Jeff Blum makes a second consecutive start at shortstop for Khalil Green. 
who is still nursing a sore throwing arm. Pain up and down the right arm for Greeny. And Jose Cruz Jr. gets the start in left field. First start for Jose in quite a while. The low back tightness has really limited his availability. For the one away, here's the switch hitting shortstop, Rafael for call. Boy, all the talk after yesterday's opener, Tony, of the brilliant starting pitching and seven combined hits. It's a pretty rough act for Randy Wolf and Greg Maddox <laughs> to follow tonight. <laughs> no kidding. Both guys last night, see why it's on strikes. Schmidt was very sharp in his uh, first start. There's a fly ball into center for Mike Cameron. Two away. I was just sitting here watching Greg Maddox pitch, and, and the thing with him is that he really hasn't lost very much. You know, I mean, he doesn't throw as hard as he used to, but he's still got good movement. He still can change speeds. He's still very deceptive out there, and, and we've seen that already. He's thrown, he started Pierre off with a couple of change-ups, worked him away, got him out on a ground out, got for call there on a fly ball. And even though the fastball's not in the 90s anymore, he's still, his movement is still very, very good. Ball and no strikes to Nomar Garcia Parham. There's that Maddox fastball that comes back over and catches the outside corner. So you look at yesterday's starter, Chris Young, so good again last night. He's been the starter in both of San Diego's two hit wins this year. Ball and two strikes to count to Nomar Garcia Parra. Well, that's the other benefit of having a guy like Maddox. You can't tell me CY and PV and Germano, Hensley haven't learned from watching him pitch. Uh, extra benefit having a guy like this with his experience and the kind of stuff that he has, the way he works, he works quickly. 2-2 to Nomar, rolled over and grounded to Blum at shortstop. All business Greg Maddox to start the night tonight. Class is in session. Greg Maddox sets the Dodgers down in order to start things tonight. We get to the bottom of the first inning and take a look at Buddy Black's Padres presented by all six Mossy Nissan locations. Marcus Giles, Jose Cruz Jr., and Adrian Gonzalez started for San Diego. Josh Bard, Mike Cameron, and Kevin Kuzminov, four through six. Hidam Boca Chica, Jeff Blum, and Greg Maddox make out a lineup filled with ex-Dodgers for San Diego here tonight as they will square up against the 30-year-old, nine-year veteran left-hander Randy Wolf, who with seven wins has made a real immediate impact for his hometown Dodgers Randy Wolf imported in via free agency from Philadelphia where he had spent his entire major league career but he's a Southern California native from the Los Angeles Valley and is pleased as punch to be wearing the blue this year I grew up a Dodger fan and got to come home and he's pitched very well and, and is a lot like Maddox in that he's not overpowering but will change speeds Three balls and no strikes is how he starts Marcus Giles tonight. Marcus had the game winning hit yesterday the eighth inning RBI and he's aboard to start things tonight as Randy Wolf loses the leadoff batter on four pitches. Take a quick glance at San Diego rather Los Angeles on defense brought to you by SD Storage. Go to SDStorage.com for a location nearest you. We talked about some of the defensive woes that the Dodgers have endured this year. Jeff Kent and Raphael for call each with nine errors. Only the Florida Marlins have committed more errors than Los Angeles in the National League this year. Leadoff hitter aboard for San Diego. Giles, the runner at first on the four pitch walk. Here's Jose Cruz Jr., and that's Randy Wolf's first strike of the game. Jose was able to pinch hit yesterday. 0 for 1 in that late pinch hitting appearance last night. 
He's had some success already against the Dodgers, one of his former employers. April 27th here at Petco Park, a ninth inning home run against Takashi Saito that brought the Padres within a run late. Dodgers would hang on to win that one, however, 6-5. to five. One ball and one strike to count to Jose Cruz Jr. Adrian Gonzalez next for San Diego. You know, Tony, getting back to Randy Wolf for a moment, you mentioned how he is a uh, he's a strikeout guy. At least he's certainly been a strikeout guy this year. 74 strikeouts that ranks him among National League leaders. But he's not a big power no. blow you away strikeout guy. Yeah, you're, you're starting to see that in this at bat. A big breaking ball, straight change. Fastball is going to be about where that one was, 87, 88 miles an hour. Normally his location is a little bit better <laughs> than his bid here at the start of the game, but you know he's going to change speeds. He's going to pitch in and out, throw that big breaking ball and a change up to go along with the with pretty good fastball. And a strike to Jose to fill the count three and two. And with the Padres only scoring one run last night. He, he missed his spot. But umpire, home plate umpire Jeff Kellogg said it was a strike. And with them having so much trouble scoring last night, let's see if the, the Padres start the runner here. Well, Randy Wolf may be thinking along those same terms, trying to keep Giles close. Three balls and two strikes to Jose Cruz Jr., making his first start in exactly one week. We talked about the low back tightness. It's kept Jose out of the lineup since last Wednesday. Ball four, back-to-back -back walks, open the night against Randy Wolf. Wolf walked a total of two batters in five innings his last time around. He's walked his first two in his first two plate appearances tonight. Adrian Gonzalez, one of many to go hitless last night. His 0 for 4 ended a 10-game hitting streak, one of the longest in his career. Chance for San Diego to perhaps jump on the board early tonight. Josh Bard next, and the pitch home to Gonzalez catches the corner for strike one. Randy Wolf has had his share of first inning trouble. That's one of the few holes that you could poke through his otherwise sparkling line in his first year as a Dodger. In his 12 previous starts, he's given up a first inning run in half of them. A lot of guys across the league like that, you know, get them before they get going. You know, he threw, uh, at one point, he had thrown 10 pitches. Eight of them were balls. And he's come right back here to Adrian Gonzalez and gotten ahead 0-2. A swing and a miss. So Wolf does come back to strike out Gonzalez, and there's one gone for him here with runners aboard. His last at bat with Gonzalez. You see him crossfire in a fastball in the outside corner two times. And then goes up the ladder a little bit. So the first two hitters, first two hitters, right-handed hitters. He he walks and then comes back and strikes out Gonzalez on three pitches. So here's Josh Bard now. Runners at first and second and one away. And Bart on the first pitch lines into left field. Gonzalez is there for it, however, and there are two gone quickly here in the first. Well, there he started Josh Bart up with something off speed. He stayed back on it nicely and lines it in the left, but right at Gonzalez. Big, slow breaking ball. He stays back nicely on it. They got it towards the end of the bat, but hit it on a button. Right at Gonzalez. 
Mike Cameron hitless yesterday. Giles walks, Cruz walks, and then Wolf tightens up to strike out Gonzalez and line out Josh Bard, two out, two on in the last of the first. And there's a bell ringer for the home plate umpire. Jeff Kellogg caught that one off the mask. Might have knocked a fill-in loose. Those got to hurt. Yeah, I don't care how much Pat yeah, is in that yeah. face mask. And the big curveball is taken for a strike. Blylevin like. Well, he takes a lot off of that breaking ball. You know, he's throwing 88, 89 per mile per hour fastballs and come back with a 66 mile per hour breaking ball. Kevin Kuzminov on deck, hoping for a chance with two gone. You know, I didn't realize until tonight, Tony. How much like Jeff Jenkins, Randy Wolf <laughs> looks. That wasn't the cleanest way to state that. Randy Wolf and Jeff Jenkins are the Brewers. Maybe it's the goatee, yeah. the left handedness. Man. Randy Wolf's goatee is a little bit thinner than Jeff Jenkins. He's yeah. got that full bush down at the bottom. Yeah. Thickness. Yeah, he's got that ZZ top thing going. Cameron handcuffed and he fouls it away. It's an 89 mile an hour fastball that Mike just gets a little piece of to stay alive. And that's the thing. Wolf kind of lulls you to, to sleep with that delivery nice and easy. And then the baseball's on top of you. Now Adrian was late on his fastball. He struck out on. And, and Cameron fouled off a couple of them, a couple of fastballs in. Fouls away the breaking ball that time. Still one and two. Mike two for eight in his career against Randy Wolf. A little different animal for a left handed guy with a curveball against Cameron. As we know right handed pitchers with a good assortment of breaking stuff have had their share of success against Mike. Kind of a different story here with the southpaw on the mound. Ooh. Just missed the corner and Wolf thought he had he him did. A couple of fastballs in on the knuckles and then a big breaking ball and it looked like a little change up on the out thought he nipped off the outside corner but pitch track says no outside so two and two Mike Cameron hoping not to squander a first inning opportunity for San Diego and it's a full count to him now three balls and two strikes Randy Wolf has thrown a lot of pitches to get himself going tonight this will be number twenty three. And the fans that aren't late arriving trying to make plenty of noise on behalf of the Padres early tonight. The full count pitch to Mike is swung on a fly ball into left. Long run for Gonzalez and for call. The shortstop is there to put away the Padres in the first. Two walks gone for not. On to the second, no score. On to the top of the second inning downtown, Jeff Kent followed by Luis Gonzalez and Russell Martin for Los Angeles. Greg Maddox pitched in less difficulty in route to a scoreless first than his opposite number. But the game's first base hit comes from Jeff Kent leading off the second. This weekend, the Mariners in town for a three-game series take advantage of Coca-Cola Friends and Family Weekends. It's a non-premium home weekend this, uh, this coming weekend against Seattle. That means you can get four upper reserve tickets, four hot dogs, and four Cokes for only $50 at Padres.com. And you can do so any home non-premium weekend this year. Here's Luis Gonzalez. And we talk about career experiences, batter versus pitcher. You rarely see a hitter in this league that has triple digits worth of plate appearances against any particular pitcher and Luis Gonzalez is facing Greg Maddox for the 107th at bat of his career it results in a fly ball to center one away
Actually, you and Luis Gonzalez, Tony, appear on a lot of lists together. Really? And uh, the one that kind of strikes you for this matchup is that you, too, are among those that have faced Greg Maddox more than anybody else in baseball. Why? It wasn't, still wasn't fun. <laughs> 100, over 100 times. And I'm sure you talk to guys on that list who, who've been up there 100 times against them. You never really get comfortable because you just never know what you're going to get. And you see he's painting, painting the outside corner. Hitters turning their back on the umpires. He's got a fastball there. He can throw the change up there. He can cut it. A little slider. A little cutter. Oh, and one the count to Russell Martin. Martin was one for three yesterday with a walk and stolen base. But it was an attempted stolen base later on in the night, which may have cost the Dodgers an opportunity to score. Just in the top of the seventh inning yesterday, after singling to start the inning, Martin was on and off the bag, all at bat against Tony Abreu, trying to steal second. When Abreu finally singled, Martin, who'd been running the entire plate appearance, lost his footing around second, and the Dodgers' best chance to score went away. Back to Maddox. Hey, folks, he's got 16 Rawling Gold Glove Awards on his shelf at home. <laughs> he makes it look so easy. Still scoreless. Watch us battle the Mariners on June 9th at 7.05. And after the game, catch a great family fireworks show. Visit Padres.com or call 877-FRIAR-TICKS to get your tickets. Stay after the game for the fireworks presented by Suzuki Motorcycles and ATVs. Kevin Kuzminoff opens the second for the home team. Kuzminoff, Boca Chica, and Blum against Randy Wolf. There's a knock for Kuz. Kevin had one of the best nights of any Padre hitter last night by virtue of two walks. <laughs> it's a base hit for him to open the second year. That's a nice swing. Tough pitch. Try to get in on him and see him pull those hands to the inside. Good position. Winds it in the left field for a base hit. So already they got half as many hits as they had last night. Half as many hits and already more leadoff hitters to reach base than they did in eight innings yesterday. Here's Boca Chica now with Kuzman off aboard. Hiram has a Dodger jersey tucked away at home, one of the former uniforms in his long major league career. We talked a little about Boca Chica earlier. On the road trip, he was a number one draft selection by the Expos all the way back in 94, and he shoots that one past Nomar into right field. Kuzman off to third, Boca Chica to second. Nice hit by Boca Chica. Got a ball out over the plate. Doesn't try to pull it, goes with it. Hits it right on the button pass, Nomar at first. And Ethier got to this ball pretty quickly, too. And Boca Chica still able to get into second base and give the Padres another, another opportunity. Here's Jeff Blum now. Runners at second and third. Nobody out. Blummer had one of the two hits yesterday for San Diego, a one for three line. Jeff Blum yesterday saw one fastball from Jason Schmidt. One. Change-ups, breaking balls, but mostly change-ups. And Jeff Blum, who has a, a pretty good disposition and is able to laugh at himself with the best of them, has just driven in a run. 
Maybe two. Here comes Boca Chica. Yeah, that's exactly where we were going. And he's seen a lot of off-speed pitches and breaking balls in this series, and that time he was ready for it, T. Stayed back nicely. And if you're a hitter, that's the situation you really want to hit in. Guys in scoring position, nobody out. Big breaking balls. Stays back enough to get the barrel of the bat on the ball. Doesn't really try to do too much with it. Lines it in the left field corner for a double. RBIs five and six for Jeff Blum. Here's Maddox now bunting Blum to third. And Greg does stuff like that so effortlessly. A runner at third base with only one away. For Maddox, his staff leading sixth sacrifice bunt this year. What you call helping yourself. Fast ball out over the plate. Drops it down. Wolf only has one play, and that's to go to first. There's Marcus Giles now with the Dodgers defense in. You know, getting back to Blum for just a second, he was kind of poking a little fun at, at the way he was handled yesterday by saying, if a guy's got a changeup, I'll see it all night. Giles grounds it to third for Abreu. That keeps everybody put and makes for two gone. Saw one fastball yesterday. Got a base hit. Looking breaking ball tonight against Randy Wolf. And uh, Jeff Blum's able to drive in two. Yeah, and if you don't want to hit that changeup or that breaking ball, that's what, you have, that's what you have to do. You have to stand in there and show them that you can handle it. And once you handle it like he did, now they'll change it up on you. Now they'll try something different. There's Cheo Jr. now with the base with a runner at third rather and two gone. A couple of early runs in support of Greg Maddox tonight. And he's hoping that his sacrifice will lead to a third. There's that slow breaking ball in for a strike. Boy, oh that, and two to Cruz. That pitch is so slow. Yeah a lot of hitters having a tough time staying back on it. There was again. Who was the slowest effective guy that you ever faced? Bob Tewksbury. Ah. Uh, he had a curveball that almost got into the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're seeing 87, 88, and then, uh, you know, 61 mile per hour breaking ball. Woo. You know, it's it's easier said than done to make something in the 50s even go 60 yeah, feet six inches. I know. Skipping those 40 feet away from the rubber. And especially if you if you're, you know, because from a hitter's perspective, arm action is what you're looking at. And if you can throw one that slow with that good arm action, it makes it tough. The curveball catches Cruz looking. San Diego on the board for two. Greg Maddox has an early lead downtown. This date in baseball history is brought to you by the San Diego County Jeep dealers. It was on this date, 1988. Red Tom Browning took a no-hitter into the ninth until Tony Gwynn got in his way. The only hit in Browning's 12-0 win over the Padres. Well, that was one of those, one of those few hits I got in the first half that year. <laughs> <laughs> I was hitting about 250 at the break that year. Do you remember that night? I remember that night because. Uh, he got to the ninth, yeah, and uh, took a little ground ball between short and third. Andre Ethier leads things off in the visitor's third. A fly ball for Cameron. Maybe one of those nights that led to Tom Browning after a uh, particularly rough start against the Cubs at Wrigley Field to uh, grabbing a beer going across the street and watching the rest of the ball game <laughs> sitting on a rooftop with his feet dangling over yeah, the edge. I remember that. <laughs> One gone now for Tony Abreu, the, re, the switch hitting third baseman. Great numbers for Tony Abreu at the time he was called up from AAA Vegas. The Dodgers are hoping that he'll help solidify what's been a shaky position for them. He was hitting 357 with 13 runs batted in at the time of his call up. A ground ball for Giles. 
Would you believe, Tony, that the Dodgers have used 16 third basemen since Adrian Beltre departed for Seattle following the 2004 season? I wouldn't. I wouldn't believe that. You know, I really thought that uh, Betamy was going to be the answer when they traded for him last year. And not to say that he might not be one day, but I sure didn't think they would have this much trouble at third base. But you know, every year's different. And when you need to win games and you need some production, you know you're going to throw some guys out there until you can until you get it. Randy Wolf takes a strike, a ball and a strike to the Dodgers starter. Greg Maddox looking for his third consecutive one, two, three inning. One and two. This is Greg's second start against the Dodgers this year. He was a winner here back on the 28th of April, limiting L.A. to two runs over seven innings. And indeed, has pitched three straight one, two, three frames to start tonight. Still 2 nothing, San Diego. Skycam Pictures brought to you by Pivot from Cox and Sprint. Feel at home anywhere. Visit cox.com slash pivot for more information. Mobile broadband access on your wireless phone. You can check your Cox email, surf the web, chat online, and instant message all at broadband speeds. Adrian Gonzalez opens the home third against Randy Wolf, Gonzalez, Bard, and Cameron for San Diego. Well, 0 for 4 yesterday was Adrian, but still with five knocks in his last four starts. One and one. San Diego on top, 2 nothing on the two run double by Jeff Blum last inning. Ball and two strikes to Gonzalez. Adrian seems to not be seeing the ball real well off, off Wolf here. Wolf has worked the outside part of the plate on him in the first two at bats. Going out there again. Giants and Diamondbacks are underway tonight. That's in the fourth inning already. Matt Morris and Brandon Webb scoreless. Arizona was able to win an extra innings yesterday to keep pace with San Diego. A two way tie for first at the start of play tonight. Giants already seven games off the pace. Here's the payoff home to Adrian. Seventh pitch of the at bat on its way after Gonzalez fouls off the first 3 2 offering. You know, Randy Wolf has worked with considerable run support this year as Gonzalez dumps a base hit into right center field. Only a handful of starters in the National League who have benefited from more offense on nights that they start. Look at all the run support the D train gets this year. Seven and a half runs. That's more than enough for a guy like him. Yeah. And that's the list if you're a starting pitcher. That's the one you want to be on. Offense is going out there and putting some runs on the board for you, giving you some freedom out there. Randy Wolf hoping that uh, his team could put some runs on the board tonight. There's Josh Bard now. All three San Diego leadoff hitters to open an inning against Randy Wolf have reached base here. But Josh, after a great weekend series in D.C., really swinging a hot bat. Bart is the only Padre position player never to have faced Randy Wolf. And part of that is due to the fact that Wolf is pitching this year after the Tommy John surgery for the first time in a couple of seasons. Yeah. It's a guy who really missed considerable time, Tony, with, with elbow trouble in Philadelphia the past few years. Yeah, he was a guy that, honestly, I really thought would get more attention this past winter as a free agent. And... You know, Dodgers signed him, and, and as you can see, seven and three. 
And he's pitched well for him. Again, Randy Wolf trying to complete a first uh, healthy season yeah, since 03. And then, you know, he's normally a better, you know, has a little bit better control than he's had already in this game. You know, seeing him walk a couple of hitters is not usually what he does. Usually, you know, he's a strike thrower. He's a lot like Greg Maddox. I and mean, he's going to change speeds, but he's going to be in the strike zone already tonight. He got three walks. Yeah, his three ball count to Josh Bard, the fifth three ball count that he has pitched to in 13 batters to start the game. And as we talked about last night, you get to those three ball counts, that pitch count's going to get up pretty quickly. And as you can see, it's going to be the 53rd pitch. There's ball four to Bard. So as was the case in the first, the first two batters to face Wolf in the inning have reached safely. Runners at first and second with nobody out. Let's see what Mike Cameron can do with an opportunity now. One of the real pluses with Randy Wolf this year is the fact that he's been able to go deep into starts. He has not worked to these kind of deep early pitch counts. In fact, he's gone six or more innings in eight of his 11 outings this year. So Mike Cameron also bringing big recent numbers to the table tonight. He fouled out to end the first. Owen one to Mike. That Tommy John surgery, you know, you hear the stories often, and I'm reminded of it as we saw. We were watching Adam Eaton pitch earlier today up here in the booth getting ready for the game. The uh, current Philly faced the Mets. The ex Philly has a breaking ball called for a strike. But you know you hear it often Tony sometimes it takes a guy not just the year after surgery but an entire additional year yeah. before he's back to himself. Yeah. Build up that strength and get the confidence back. Oh. You know Wolf's surgery was in 05. July of 05 missed the rest of 05 obviously. And then didn't make his his season debut last year until July. Swing and a miss by Cameron. So Wolf comes back to strike out Cameron one away on the left handers third punch out of the game. That to flipping a couple of those breaking balls up there going up the ladder on Mike. So here's Kevin Kuzminoff now. He singled and scored one of the two runs in the second. Kevin tried to wait back on a breaking ball and punches a pop up behind second. Two away. Now Randy Wolf hoping he can get out of this jam the same way he got out of the first inning jam with two leadoff hitters aboard. Pretty much going about it the same way. In the first he struck out Adrian Gonzalez. This then he struck out Cameron. You got a fly, really a line out to left and a and a pop up to short. Boca Chica takes a curveball for a strike. You see, he isn't bashful about throwing that breaking ball. Jeff Blum waiting next, the guy that got to Wolf earlier tonight and hit Amis behind 0 and 2. So, in talking about Hiram Boca Chica being an ex Dodger, we were curious just how many of his, his ex teammates are still Dodgers. And it wasn't that long ago that he played for LA. He was last a Dodger in 2002. The second of two stints with L.A. He was also there in 01 and 2000 and some time with the Tigers in between. 
not a single guy remains <laughs> from when he was a Dodger just a few short years ago. Hanging breaking ball and Boca Chica deposits it into left field. 3-0 San Diego. And an ex-Dodger shining for the Padres tonight. And Andy Wolf went one more time with that breaking ball, it looked like. And that's a hanger, and he hung it inside. Boca Chica lines his ball down the line. Gonzo does a nice job getting to it and getting it back in. Keeping the Padres from scoring that uh, the second run. Hey, Ron Boca Chica has two of San Diego's three doubles tonight. Now Blum and Jeff Blum is driven in another run. They're going to try it for another with Boca Chica. Make it a two run single for Blummer. Jeff Blum is driven in four of San Diego's five runs tonight. So that, that's what you call good hitting. We were talking about how if you threw him a breaking ball or a changeup, how do you change that? You hit it. And he jumps on a first pitch fastball right here and lines it right back up the middle and drives in two. Glenn Hoffman going to challenge Juan Pierre's arm out in center field and both run score and Big five spot. Here comes Rick Honeycutt to have a conversation with Randy Wolf. For Jeff Blum, by the way, four runs batted in tonight, just shy of his career high. Five is that number for Jeff, and he's done it twice. Most recently as an Astro against the Mets back in 2002. And you've got some bullpen activity behind Wolf now. Poway's Brett Tomko out of the rotation for the time being and working in relief, and he's up early tonight. Here's Maddox with two gone. That might be the most impressive part of this, Tony, the fact that all this damage has come with two out yeah. in the inning. Got some big hits. Randy Wolf has only once given up more than five runs in a start this season. Ball and two strikes to Maddox. And a swing and a miss, but San Diego hangs three more against Randy Wolf in the third. Jeff Blum, perhaps en route to a career night with four runs batted in already. Five nothing San Diego downtown early tonight as we go to the top of the fourth. Time to take a look at the Aflac trivia question. Who is the L.A. Dodgers all-time home run leader? We'll post an answer for you in the bottom of the fourth. Greg Maddox working with a big lead tonight early. 5 nothing Friars. He'll go to work on the top of the order. Pierre for call in Garcia Parra. Greg has been much more efficient than his opposite number tonight. Pierre bunts it foul to fall behind 0 and 2. Doing nothing but throwing, throwing strikes. Just pounding the strike zone. Got a nice rhythm going. Seven pitches in the second, seven pitches in the third. He's in the strike zone and is a hitter. When you get a guy in the strike zone, you're, you're apt to more want to swing, it, swing it a pitch early in the camp. But he doesn't like to waste a whole lot of a whole lot of pitches, so he's always around the strike zone. Ball and two strikes to count to Juan Pierre. That's how an 86 mile an hour fastball can look like a 106 mile an hour fastball. Two and two. Pierre hitless in the series. And the 2 2 pitch is slapped to second base. Giles picks it up. One away in the fourth. 
Again, that's the beauty of Maddox right there. He pounded him with a fastball in the pitch before. Comes back with a changeup. He's out in front. Rolls over it to Giles at second. Easy out. Here's the switch inning shortstop, Raphael Fracal, who flied to center in his first at bat tonight. And Fracal started with strike one. You know, we, we throw that term around a lot, talking about a guy being efficient, and we can mean it in a number of ways. Using few pitches to get through an inning. Or in the case of Greg Maddox, using few pitches to get through an inning and striking out a lot more than he walks. In fact, Greg's strikeout to walk ratio this year is the best in the National League. Jake Peavy close behind. Better than four and a half strikeouts for every one walk he throws. See, 34 pitches. <laughs> he does all the things that a pitcher has to do very well. That last ground ball, the first, he broke as soon as the ball, as soon as he made contact. Got in a good position, gave Gonzalez an easy throw. There's no more Garcia Parra now. You know, the great Vin Scully here tonight broadcasting back in Los Angeles had such a great line that we have used a lot, always trying to give Vinny proper homage, but in talking about the many matchups between Bob Gibson and Sandy Koufax, Vinny said, these two pitch like they're double parked. <laughs> and that's kind of how Greg goes about his work. Pitching like there's a meter running somewhere. Another one, two, three frame for the professor. It's five nothing San Diego. Nothing San Diego. We go to the home half of inning number four for Marcus Giles. Top of the order against Randy Wolf, Giles, Cruz, and Gonzalez. Five runs on six San Diego hits. And Jeff Blum has been the star tonight, filling in for Khalil Green, who's down with a sore arm, and Blum taking advantage of all of his opportunities tonight. Hey. Mark has got to move the feet out of the way. Two and one. So we're trying to work him inside. Got in there a little bit too much. Three balls and a strike. So far, Randy Wolf has had trouble keeping the leadoff hitter off base. It looks like he'll have his first bit of success in that venture here in the fourth one away. Could be a trick trivia question for some. We reiterate who is the L.A. Dodgers all time home run leader L.A. Dodgers. It's Patrick Henry High School's Eric Karros 270 career L.A. Dodger home runs. Here's Jose Cruz Jr. now one of three ex Dodgers in San Diego's lineup tonight. <laughs> Eric Karros is a number of uh, a number of trivia question answers. When you talk about L.A. Dodger history, that is. You go back into the Brooklyn years, and you're going to find a whole different set of names, of course. <laughs> two balls and two strikes to Jose Cruz, Jr. And he punches a pop-up into foul territory. That's two away. You know, there's there's something of a San Diego connection, actually, Tony, with the with all the Dodger home run leaders. Caros, of course, is San Diegan from yep. Patrick Henry High School, and Duke Snyder, yep. Fallbrook's own Duke Snyder. 
who is the all time Dodger home run leader when you count the Brooklyn years of course. Here's Gonzalez now. And Matt what's that number the Brooklyn Dodger record. Three hundred eighty nine. Some uh, one hundred and nineteen more than Karos. And I wouldn't know this without looking at the list. These these names all make sense, you know. Duke Snyder, Gil Hodges, yep. Karos, Roy Campanella, Say Garvey, <laughs> Carl Ferrillo, Mike Piazza, Pedro Guerrero, and Raul Mondesi. Yeah. Played there a while. Wow, I never would have put him on the franchise top ten. That's one of my one of my favorite things to do when you went around the league was to get the media guide and go to the top ten and and you know looked at other guys, other teams and to see who who was who. And I thought it was Eric Carroll's, but I wasn't gonna, you know, throw my behind on the line and say it, <laughs> but um on the Brooklyn side, they had some, you know, great history. Dodgers are a team that have great history, and you look at their top tens, and you see names like Campanella, Perillo, Snyder, and then the modern Dodgers, uh, Say and Garvey. Well, when somebody does that with a San Diego media guy, they see Tony Gwynn atop just about every list yeah. except for home runs. Top ten, though. <laughs> top 10. A swing and a miss by Adrian Gonzalez, who might have top 10 numbers before his Padre career is all said and done. 5 nothing, San Diego. Padres on the Viejas mid-game recap tonight. Five nothing San Diego alongside Tony Gwynn, Matt Vasgersian. Top of the fifth inning. And the Dodgers will open with Jeff Kent against Greg Maddox. Kent has the lone Dodger hit tonight. A leadoff single back in the second. This one smothered by Kuzminoff. The throw to first, and Adrian can't pick it out. After Kevin made a great play, he short-armed the throw. And that'll likely be scored as single for Kent. Hit Hacken at the first pitch. And Kuzmanoff, he realized who was running. He, he'd have known he had a little bit more time. But he wanted to get rid of it. And I'm sure he trusts Adrian Gonzalez would have helped him. The ball bounced up high and wasn't able to come up with it. So Kent gets an infield knock. Make Jeff Kent two for two tonight, and now Luis Gonzalez. Along with the uh, the big number of at bats Luis Gonzalez has against Greg Maddox, a lot of hits. 33 for 106 with 10 home runs. Gonzalez has hit more home runs against Greg Maddox than anybody else ever. How do you find a hole in that defense? Cameron up and throwing to third. Not in time to get Kent. And the Dodgers have a runner in scoring position for the first time tonight. Maddox can't believe the safe call at third. Show you how smart Greg Maddox is. They had a shift with Luis Gonzalez. And that's a base hit to center field. And guess who's covering third base? See, Gonzalez hit this ball up the middle, and this is Jeff Blum diving for it. Couldn't come up with it. Cameron up and throwing, and look who's making the play at third base. <laughs> Greg Maddox on top of it and arguing the call. And maybe had a case. Uh, awfully close. Third base umpire Mike Riley was right there. Greg Maddox looking like Greg Nettles out there playing third base tonight. So in a little bit of trouble for the first time tonight. Runners at the corners. Nobody out here in the fifth. 
And Russell Martin lays off to make it 2 and 0. Oh. The Dodgers as a team have been quite good with runners in scoring position this year. Martin no exception. That's into right field. Boca Chica is there to make the catch. Going to be enough to bring in a run. <laughs> Boca Chica throwing himself onto the turf. Martin 2-0 two, two and oh ahead in the camp. Boca Chica thinking he can get it there all the way. See the throw goes up the line, can't able to score. So the skunks out of the box for the Dodgers. Five to one San Diego. Credit Martin with his 40th RBI to lead the club. And now Andre Ethier. Gonzalez remains at first. Louis Gonzalez might run a little bit on you. He'll pick no. a spot. He's stolen three bags this year. You know, the Dodgers would have liked by this point to have run a lot more against Greg Maddox because people have run against yeah. Greg Maddox this year. And Greg doesn't much care about that. Opponents have stolen 18 consecutive bags with Maddox on the mound. One and one. I think Greg has played enough, played against Luis Gonzalez enough to know that hey, he might be running here and we give him a courtesy throw to first. But you're right, he's not really concerned that much about the runners. He wants to make a quality pitch. Line to third. Kuzmanov gets just high enough to bring that ball down. Kuz was already on his way back down to the ground when he made that catch. See that ball running away. Ethier hits it right off the end of the bat. So what looked like could be the start of a big inning for the Dodgers. Greg Maddox has gotten it back under control and gotten a couple of outs. Tony Abreu, however, lines the first pitch into the opposite field. That's a fair ball in trouble. Cruz tracking it as Luis Gonzalez will come in to score. The throw to third is in time to get Abreu. The run does not score. Luis Gonzalez can't believe it. Home plate umpire Jeff Kellogg says the run does not score, that the out at third happened first. Five to one. Padres baseball at Petco Park tonight brought to you in part by Barrett American. Visit Barrett.com to view Aragon, Barrett's La Mesa townhomes priced from the 400,000s. By Earl Scheib, got dens and dings? Visit an Earl Scheib paint and body for a free estimate. Check them out at carpainting.com. And by Comerica Bank, we listen, we understand, we make it work. Jose Cruz Jr. throwing out Tony Abreu at third, and in the eyes of Jeff Kellogg, this happened before Luis Gonzalez crossed the plate, and our crack production staff is busy compiling the evidence. We'll, uh, we're going to put those two plays to a time code and determine exactly what happened first. Either way, San Diego catches a big break here. Yeah. And that was a great throw by Jose Cruz Jr. from the corner. One hop throw to third. Josh Bard leads off the last of the fifth. It's Bard, Cameron, and Kuzminoff, and Josh bounces it out to Abreu. You know, Luis Gonzalez was amazed that the run didn't count, and so was Grady Little, and I'll be honest, Tony, so was I. I was watching the throw because the thing that was going to determine whether Luis Gonzalez scored or not was the ricochet in the corner and it and it and it you see Gonzo's reaction he's kind of surprised but you know he can't tell what's happening at third base Cruz made a nice play of going to get the ricochet and, and making a one hop throw to Kuzman off at third to get a break with sliding in before Gonzalez could score. 
Ball and no strikes to count to Mike Cameron. Yeah, that, that's really that's really the look that, that Luis Gonzalez had. It was more surprise than it was disagreement because after all his 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 stance, his posture, he didn't he yeah. wasn't able to turn around and yeah. look at what happened behind him. But he was shocked that 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 run didn't score. Well, the on deck hitter, that's what his responsibility to let that runner coming home though if you to hurry up. There's a base hit for Mike Cameron. So what could have been at least a two run inning for L.A. at least is limited to just a run. Here's Kuzman off now. He has singled and scored tonight. lefty move over to first base. San Diego will be looking at another left hander on the mound tomorrow. South Paul Hong Chi Kuo against Jake Peavy tomorrow night. Honda dealers pregame show at 630 tomorrow. We, we kind of talked about this a little bit Tony at the beginning of the show the fact that it's something of a rarity to have a Dodger left hander let alone two of them in the rotation. This is a franchise that in the 1990s went 681 consecutive starts by right handed pitchers. Kuzminov lines to left to base hit. Make Kevin two for three tonight. Tony let's go back to that controversial out at the end of the top half of the inning. This is synced up per the time codes. This is in synced up time. Frame by frame. You can watch the out at third before Gonzalez scored. Very nice work guys. Very nice work and that's why they tell you on a ball with with two outs like that you got to keep running and you see Gonzo slows down a little bit and that's just enough for Kuzmanov to put the tag on him before his foot hits the plate. Runners are going. Martin's throw to third is in time to get Cameron. Kuzmanov ended up staying at first base. It looked like the double steal was on. Instead, it was Cameron off and running with Kuz hanging on, and Mike is thrown out five to two to five, rather. See, Martin comes up and puts a perfect throw down, Ooh. and I think Cameron's hand got in there, but umpire Mike Riley can't see it because he's behind him. Bray who ended up tagging him on the chest. You see, he tags him on the chest as that hand's getting in there. See that hand get in there before the tag? Mike wow. Riley's on the back side. He can't see that. And they call him out. And that's all he could call him is out. And a swing and a miss by Hiram Boca Chica. I think the uh, Lexus Pursuit of Excellence player of the game tonight is Bill Pettigrew in the truck. <laughs> yes, sir. Putting together some fine videotaped evidence. We'll get back into it as we continue. and the Padres on top of the Dodgers five to one downtown tonight top of the sixth inning and L.A. will lead it off with a pinch hitter. USD's Brady Clark starting things in the sixth Clark Pierre and for call. One ball and one strike to the ex Brewer. Brady Clark has seen most of his time as a Dodger this year as a reserve. A pinch hitter. He was acquired from the Brewers at the very end of spring training in exchange for right hander Elmer descends. Got really good career numbers against Greg Maddox. 
11 for 33. Plenty of NL Central meetings between the two. Freddie Clark's a guy with a short stroke, uses the whole field. You're gonna have any success off Greg, I think you have to be able to do that. Ball and two strikes to Clark. Pierre and Fercal follow five runs on eight hits for San Diego. A run on four hits for the Dodgers tonight. only rough inning by the numbers has been the sixth. Clark lines at to shallow right for Boca Chica. An 8.59 sixth inning ERA his highest one through nine this year. He's already got one gone here in the sixth inning tonight. I love that sign. Quick out. I don't know what their definition is. Does it say out there, guys? Quick outs, less than three pitches. Three pitches or less. You That's, got it. I like it. Spoken like a man who played defense <laughs> behind guys. <laughs> you love that. That's why you love playing behind guys like Greg Maddox. Is that he's in the strike zone. Hitters are going to be hitters. They want to swing the bat. Two usually, balls and no strikes. Usually great plays are made behind guys that work quickly, and you see he's in his rhythm, he's getting the sign, he's winding up, and he's letting it go. Two and one to Juan Pierre. Pierre's hitless in the series, 0 for 6. But he's another Dodger who has pretty good numbers against Greg Maddox, and as was the case with Brady Clark, a lot of NL Central matchups. That's bounced to first. Flashy play by Gonzalez. Well, that ball checked up on Adrian, not to mention he's got a burner coming up the line. A fine play by Adrian Gonzalez. It's a tough play, too, to the backhand side, taking that big bounce. Guy who can run in Pierre. Look how easy he makes this play. That ball bounces up on him. And he backhands it. Plenty of time to get to first base. He's going to win a gold glove one day. He's going to win a gold glove one day. If Albert Pujols won it last year. Come on now. Albert Pujols won a gold glove because he hits 350 with 40 <laughs> home runs. It does happen sometimes. <laughs> oh and one the count home to Rafael for calm. You know, two of the better defensive first basemen in the game in action tonight, Adrian Gonzalez and Nomar Garcia Parra. In fact, last year, Garcia Parra had a fielding percentage trailing only Todd Helton, and that was in his first year at the position. Well, well the guy at the top of that list is pretty good first baseman, too, Derek Lee. Here's the 0 2 home to for call. Another good play by Adrian. Flashing it at the three position tonight. A 1 2 3 6 for Maddox. It's still 5 to 1 Friars. He's going to win one. Seattle in town this weekend. Come watch the Padres and Mariners on Friday and wear Padre gear for Friar Fridays. Every Friday home game. Wear Padres attire downtown. Visit the Padres Majestic Team Store or Padres.com for your official Padres gear today. It's an ex-Padre taking over on the mound for Los Angeles. Brett Tomko opened the year as a member of the rotation but has since been moved to relief duty. Something that happened last year for him as well. Moved to the bullpen last year and actually finished in a very effective fashion out of the Dodger bullpen. So Tomko faces Jeff Blum to open the last of the sixth. Blum, Maddox, and Giles, and Jeff Blum is in the midst of a fine night. 
four runs batted in one shy of matching a career best done a couple of times in 2002 as a Houston Astro. He's got the big hits tonight. Two balls and two strikes the count to Blum. And that scenario we were talking about at the beginning of the game where he was getting off speed stuff. Got him looking. Yeah, that's changed a little. Yeah, I was going to say changes now. He's got a new pitcher. That's going to change. So got him out in front on some breaking balls and then comes back with a fastball knee high. I don't think Jeff thought it was high enough. Here's Maddox now making his third plate appearance of the night. Greg is sacrificed for his team leading sixth time and struck out tonight. For Brett Tomko moving back to the bullpen and though it happened earlier this year than it did last season it has yielded the same kind of positive results since returning to relief at the end of May. He's made four appearances allowed six hits and struck out seven. Brett's one two is swung on and missed. So Maddox is a strikeout victim. Back to back punch outs for Tomko. And that'll bring back Marcus Giles. Well, Tomko's kind of a mystery because he's got really good stuff. Good fastball, good overhand breaking ball. Worked on a cutter the last couple of years. Good changeup, but just hadn't been able to put it together as a starter. You see the velocities there, 96 miles an hour. Giles goes around. It's one and one. Number start Brett Tomko made against the Padres here. Where I believe he had retired 13 in a row before San Diego got to him and eventually beat him. In fact, Greg Maddox started that night. It was back on the 28th of April. Giles bounces at to third for a Brayu. And Tomko here goes one, two, three. We played six complete downtown tonight. Still five to one Padres. Hey kids, come cheer us on June 10th as we take on the Mariners at 105 and take home a Padres yo-yo. Get to the game early for your chance to break a Guinness World Record for the most people playing yo-yo. All kids 14 and younger get a Padres yo-yo presented by Macy's. Nomar Garcia Parra leads off the L.A. 7th. Greg Maddox is nine outs away, perhaps with some help to try to close out their second in a row over the Dodgers and a Padre win tonight would bring San Diego back to four and four against L.A. in the season series. And man alive has he been efficient tonight. <laughs> 60 pitches going into the seventh. Nomar pops it up. Maddox wants it. Tony he is yet to even go to a three ball count <laughs> tonight and that's what I mean when he's on and he's locating like he is right now he's fun to watch and only twice has he gone to two and oh well Jeff Kent's coming up to the plate he's seen two pitches tonight he swung at the first pitch both times got a base hit to left and the infield hit and when Greg Maddox is on really doesn't make a whole lot of sense seeing a whole lot of pitches because he's usually throwing strike one. And so if you get something to hit early in the count you're going to take a swing at it. And, and that's why 60 61 pitches now. First pitch to Kent misses inside. And that's, that's Maddox right there. He 
realized the same thing. He'd seen two pitches early. He's going run one in on his hands here. If he wants to swing, maybe he'll break his bat. One and one to Kent. There's been a really nice trend that has started to develop in this Padres Dodgers rivalry in that since the 29th of April L.A. has scored two runs in their last 29 innings against the Padres pitching staff. That's a nice trend if you're a Padre <laughs> fan of course. Yeah. Sure Grady Little not liking what he's seeing what he's seeing tonight and last night. The one two to Kent is jerk foul. This is not a Dodger team that's going to win with gaudy offensive totals however. We talked about it yesterday the fact that L.A. considers themselves the same type of team the Padres do win with pitching. Their offensive numbers not the stuff of dreams. Though Kent gets a hold of this one two pitch Cameron tried to go up and get it but that ball is gone. Solo shot for Jeff Kent is ninth of the year. And there Greg got a ball up in the zone. He wanted it down and away and instead he got it up and Kent hits it to center field and Mike Cameron gives it an all out effort but it hits the the back part of the top of the wall and goes out of the ballpark. When Mike needs a moment here went into the wall pretty hard. And being given a courtesy moment to get himself back together. San Diego bullpen busies itself now after the solo home run by Kent that makes it a three run game. Heath Bell got up quickly for the Padres. What's the conference all about here Tony. It looks like there's uh, I'm thinking it's part of the pad that's on the ground in center field but that pad right there from here looks like you know it's laying on the ground and maybe it needs to be kicked in a little bit but <laughs> that's a great thing about having a padded wall out there. Here's Luis Gonzalez now and San Diego goes back into the same shift that they played for Gonzalez earlier tonight one that he beat. You know we were a little critical earlier this uh, this season Tony when Ned Yost and the Brewers came in here and they played every left handed hitter in a shift like mm -hmm. this. It didn't make a lot of sense to us especially for a guy like Adrian Gonzalez. But given this specific matchup. Maddox against Luis Gonzalez you can understand it a little more. Now having said that look at what little room exists between Blum and Giles. Uh, uh, no. And that's exactly where Luis Gonzalez got his base hit last yeah. at bat. Well, Jeff Blum was almost surprised that that ball was coming near him. And I just cringe every time I see this shift because well, he's a major league hitter. The team is down three runs right now and, and granted Maddox has got a good change up and it's hard to stay back but all that room on the left hand side here. His ball four to Gonzalez. So Maddox's first three ball count results in his first walk tonight. Seventy one pitches. Six and a third into the ball game, and perhaps a directive from the dugout to buy Heath Bell a little bit more time.
Here comes a left-hander, and it looks like that might be all for Greg tonight. Keith Bell's ready to go. And I think Buddy's going to make Jeff Kellogg break up the tea party before he makes a decision if, in fact, he wants to go to Bell. And he does. <laughs> Classic filibuster. Senator Buddy Black has made his move for Heath Bell. This pitching change brought to you by San Diego Harley-Davidson located downtown and in Kearney Mesa. And a hero's exit given to Greg Maddox on this Wednesday night downtown. We'll be right back. Keith Bell enters for San Diego. His numbers are brought to you by Mission Federal Credit Union, where your mission's our mission. Open a high-yield checking account today. Well, Heath was up in the bullpen yesterday, but never got into the game. In fact, he last pitched on Sunday in D.C. He has been invaluable, an ERA just over one in 27 appearances out of the bullpen. Here is looking for a ground ball. Ground ball double play gets you out of the inning. Is this threat? Now the Dodgers will have to dial it up considerably against the harder throwing Heath Bell on for Maddox with a run in one out and one on in the seventh. And he starts Russell Martin with a slider for a strike. Martin is grounded into a double play and driven in a run with a sacrifice fly. On the ground for Blum to Giles, back to Gonzalez. Heath Bell rolls his ground ball on the second pitch out of the bullpen. Seventh inning stretch at Petco Park, 5-2 San Diego. MTV used to rock the vote. We encourage you to swing the vote. June 8th is swing the vote night in San Diego. Log on to Padres.com and cast your vote to help make sure your favorite priors are well represented for the All-Star game. Fans can vote up to 25 times per email address. Visit Padres.com and vote often. Brett Tomko will enter his second inning of work tonight. As San Diego holds a three run lead late back alongside Tony Gwynn Matt Baskersian the Padres with two in the second three in the third and they have not looked back Jose Cruz Junior Adrian Gonzalez and Josh Bard here in the Padres seventh Cheo Bunting Abreu's got a hurry not in time <laughs> great butt. Great play by Abreu. See him square late. Abreu on the dead run. Bare hands this ball and, and makes a great throw, really. Cruz just beats it out. Cruz aboard for Adrian Gonzalez now. Adrian one for three. He has singled and, and scored a run. And by the way, Arizona has a one nothing lead over the Giants in the eighth inning at Phoenix tonight. The Giants and Diamondbacks rolling along in the same kind of clip that San Diego and L.A. was yesterday. A Chris Young home run. The lone score in that ball game. Oh and two to Adrian.
swing and a miss and Tomko takes care of Gonzalez on three pitches. Folks if you're in the market for a pre owned vehicle we encourage you to go to Mossy Nissan dot com and click on the pre owned inventory tab you'll have pictures and descriptions for uh, nearly 300 vehicles available on all six Mossy Nissan lots like a 350 Z an 04 model convertible for just over 30 grand at Mossy Nissan El Cajon. Six Mossy locations in San Diego County, Mossy Nissan. Josh Barn with a runner aboard and one away. Got bullpen activity for San Diego. Heath Bell threw the two pitches to get Russell Martin to ground into an inning ending double play. And Scott Linebrink, who pitched a scoreless inning last night, is up. Best bullpen in baseball. Yeah. Period. Two and one to Bard. Well, whoever Kevin Towers gets to fill in down there in that bullpen, they usually do a great job. You know, saw Rudy Sionis last night. He's been in that bullpen. Heath Bell comes in this year and does a great job. Clay Meredith last year does a great job. Well, Kevin Towers and his staff, and, and KT has has tapped the resources of a lot of pretty good baseball minds. They have put together such a good bullpen the last few years and Heath Bell this year has been such a great contributor. You know the guy that found Heath Bell is one of KT's assistant GM's former Dodger general manager Paul De Podesta. It just makes it such a, a, a tasty irony on a night like tonight. Yeah. Bard with the ball into the opposite field and Gonzalez makes the catch two away well, that's a big night it's the night before the big day tomorrow draft days tomorrow so you know they're doing their homework and Padres have six supplemental round picks and so chance for them to load up on more young players. You know the more people you talk to the, the Padres like what they have at the lower levels of the minor league system. And they think that in a couple of years the uh, you know the current. The current Lake Elsinore guys mm -hmm. might be on the verge of major league contributions. Mike Cameron the batter with two away. A strike to Cameron. He's behind 0 and 2. He went at the big league level. It'll all fall into place. Mm -hmm. That's true. But at the same time, you got to be smart too, because you know you got some guys who are getting on in years, and you have to make that tough decision. Swing and a miss by Cameron. Nothing after the leadoff single. We played seven complete tonight. It's still five to two, San Diego. We talked about some of the young Padres at Class A Lake Elsinore a moment ago. You can enjoy a Padres double header with the Lake Elsinore Storm here Saturday afternoon. The Storm takes on the San Jose Giants at 2.30 here at Petco Park, and then the Padres against the Mariners at 7.05. Visit Padres.com to get your tickets today. You don't see that in the major leagues. Well, the likes of Coach John Contera are salivating over the opportunity to watch the single-A Friars here in the big league ballpark. A lot of big fans of minor league baseball around here. Here's Scott Linebrink to work the top of the eighth. Andre Ethier leads things off for Los Angeles. Ethier, Abreu, and then the pitcher spot against Linebrink, who again worked a scoreless inning yesterday. Scott was credited with the victory last night.
One ball and one strike. Tomorrow, Jake Peavy and Hong Chi Kuo. Honda Dealers pregame show starts at 6.30 tomorrow night. Ethier punches a fly ball into the opposite field for Cheo Jr., one away. Seaside Buick Pontiac GMC take us beyond the Wednesday night box score. Adam Eaton and the Phillies defeating the Mets 4-2 at Shea Stadium today. And that Chris Young home run holding up in the bottom of the eighth as Arizona leads the Giants 1-0 in the desert. There's Tony Abreu now with one gun. We mentioned how after this series the Mariners come to town. The Dodgers will finally go home. And they take on the Toronto Blue Jays as a part of the second interleague weekend on the 07 schedule. Weird scheduling. Weird scheduling. You know, Dodgers Angels is one thing. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Great for baseball. Dodgers, Blue Jays, who cares? <laughs> and most of the interleague matchups are who cares? Yeah. You get Mets, Yankees, great. Cubs, White Sox, fantastic. But most of them are more on the uncompelling side. This ball four to Abreu. I liked it when it first started. I just, because division play is so... Is, is determined by, you know, sometimes these interleague matchups. You know, while the Padres are playing Boston and Baltimore, the Angels or the Dodgers are playing Tampa and Toronto. Yeah. Don't play the Red Sox. Yeah. And you're trying to win a division and you're not playing the same teams. Here's Wilson Betamid with a man aboard and one away. The Dodger bullpen scattering. Got the left-hander Mark Hendrickson up and throwing along with right-hander Chad Billingsley. Mark Hendrickson just lost his spot in the rotation when Jason Schmidt was reactivated yesterday. Two balls and no strikes account to Wilson Benamid. Two and one. This is the whole reason that Mud's up at the uh, buffet at Valley View. Better meet. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Two and two to the ex Brave. This is an interesting matchup, Tony, as this was the rumored trade last year. All the discussions of Betamit maybe coming to San Diego before the deadline. The rumor had him coming here for line brink. I'm glad that deal wasn't made. Well, Betamit hit some, had some big hits for the Dodgers last year. Got him! And this is the fastball line brink didn't get last night. Ooh. See that ball run back over the inside corner right at the end. You got no shot. Tough pitch to handle. Believe it or not, that's the first Padre strikeout tonight. Here's Juan Pierre. He takes strike one. Pierre 0 for 7 in the series. Starts play at 266. Slashes at the third. Kuzminov keeps it in front of him and throws it away. Abreu didn't notice the ball was thrown away until rather late in the game, but still makes it to third, and that's going to bring the tying run to the plate. Pierre slaps at this ball. Kuzmanov does a nice job. He still had time to go to first. 
the double pump. Throws it away and keeps the inning alive, and now the tying run comes to the plate. Raphael for call, the batter for L.A. And for call, dumps a fly ball into right. Not to worry. To the last of the eighth, five to two, San Diego. On the next forefront, they're the dynamic duo who spearheaded a massive fundraising campaign to renovate the aging North Park Theater. Meet Jack Montgomery and Leon Natker, founders of Lyric Opera San Diego on Forefront tonight after the Lexus postgame show. Log on to forestd.com for more information. Pitching change for L.A. here in the last of the eighth. Left-hander Mark Hendrickson, who made eight starts in the uh, void created when Jason Schmidt was on the DL with the shoulder problem. Back in the bullpen, this is where he started the year. And he'll get at least a half inning of work in here tonight. Hendrickson is making his first relief outing since April 14th. And that happened to be the night that Schmidt faced the Padres before going on the disabled list. Hendrickson has struck out Kevin Kuzminov. Martin finishes with the throw down to first, one gone. Trevor Hoffman is up, Tony, in uh, the hopes of perhaps converting his 500th career wow. save tonight. Unbelievable. But if he does come in, it won't be an easy save. He's got three, four, five, Garcia Park, Kenton Gonzalez. Hirambo Kachika has had an outstanding night. A couple of doubles, two runs scored, and an RBI. You know, the status of Brian Giles is still uh, rather unclear. Brian took some batting practice today. But I don't think he's any closer to being reactivated. There's a ground ball chance for for call low throw but a good pick by Garcia Parra. Still evaluating is the term that Buddy Black used to talk about Brian Giles today before the game. They can't determine when Brian will be reactivated until he's able to test the knee and yeah. he, he's not able to test it at this point. Well, that means it's going to be more time. So guys like Boca Chica, Boca Chica and Sledge are going to have to be productive until they can get him back. And, you know, it's eating him alive, sitting there not being able to contribute. Team's battling for first place. He wants to be out there. Two balls and no strikes to Jeff Blum, who will be a candidate for Lexus Pursuit of Excellence Player of the Game Honors. Two for three with four runs batted in. We encourage you to stay with us after play by play tonight for the Lexus postgame show. John Weisbarth and Bob Scanlon will recap all the action. Talk about what could be a historic night for Trevor Hoffman. They're coming to you live from the Diamond View Tower right after play by play tonight. T, by the way, oh, Mom, you think that's enough diet soda for you there, midnight? <laughs> like the extra huge gulp there. <laughs> Do you know, Tony, that last night's Lexus postgame show did a better rating than all of the 11 o'clock news broadcasts here in San Diego? They're that good. Look at them. Get ready, boys. <laughs> <laughs> There's a 3-2 home to Blum. Ball four and a two-out walk by Mark Hendrickson. I have to tell you, that studio looks really cool. I haven't been in there, but on TV, it looks really... Now, see, that looks really empty. <laughs> no, it, it, is a, it is a great facility there. 
from the outside looking in four stories up in the Diamond View Tower. Here's Russell Branyan now pinch hitting with a man aboard Branyan was my Lexus pursuit of excellence player of the game yesterday though he was not an official candidate for the vote was hit by a pitch stole a base and scored the game's only run. I hear you. Let's take you back to the last of the eighth inning last night after being hit in the left toe by Rudy Sianez. His 10th career stolen base, and it was a big one. He picked the perfect pitch. Sianez didn't go to the slide step, his regular motion to the plate. He got a great jump. Got himself in scoring position, and Marcus Giles drove him in. Ball stays up to him. Ball four walks Branyan. Back to back two out passes by Mark Hendrickson, whose control had been so good through most of his eight starts this year. You know, Hendrickson, as we had talked about previously, worked with the sports psychologist, Dr. Ken Revisa, a guy who had a lot of success with the, uh, the Cal State Fullerton. NCAA championship baseball team and they won it in 04 and it was on the urging of his former manager in Tampa Bay Joe Madden the former Angels bench coach that uh, Hendrickson worked with Dr. Revisa and it, it was something that Hendrickson credited as to really helping him his issues of focus became a lot easier. Marcus Giles will ground to second base and that'll wrap up a scoreless eighth for Hendrickson. It's Trevor time downtown tonight. The all time closer looking for save number 500. Tony this would be a big one for Trevor Hoffman 499 career saves trying for number 500 tonight let's take it back a couple of years ago Old Bush Stadium in St. Louis number 400 May 6 2005 he wrapped up a six to five victory by striking out Sotsuguchi and some 99 saves later here we are tonight as you can tell it would really take Mariano Rivera Billy Wagner and the rest of the elite closers in baseball some kind of finish to their careers to get to 500 we'll go back to that in a moment as Nomar Garcia para leads off the ninth. Trevor wrapped up number 17 yesterday perhaps en route to another all star appearance this year still good numbers opponents only hitting 175. Nomar with a ball well hit to left field. Cruz is back at the scoreboard and plays it off the wall. It's Cameron that gets to it. And Garcia Parra opens the ninth with a booming double that just missed getting out of here. So the leadoff hitter aboard in scoring position. But let's go back to this list, Tony. The likes of Rivero, Wagner, and company considered the elite closers in baseball. Not a one of them is young in their baseball lives, and they would need to do a lot of work to get to 500 saves. Yeah. Mm. This guy's been consistent. Jeff Kent takes his strike. Throwing strikes, he started young enough. You know, where you could pile them up, and you know, Grant, there's some young closers in the game today, like a Papa Bond who might be around for a long time and have a chance to to get to 500. But you know, think about this this guy; he's been consistent. 
Kent grounds it to shortstop. Blum gathers it in and throws him out. One away. So now Luis Gonzalez with the runner at second. And again, those guys on the bench, they know how important getting a 500 would be. Sure, Hoffie's thinking about just closing the door and shutting, shutting the door and winning this game for the Padres. But. John and Becky Moores are here on what could be a historic night. Swing and a miss by Luis Gonzalez. Gonzalez has walked in single tonight. He did not face Trevor Hoffman yesterday and is 7 for 28 against him lifetime. A 250 average with no home runs. On the ground for Giles. Makes the play to his right and throws out Gonzalez. One out away from number 500. Well, yeah, I'll tell you, for the guys that have been on the bench the last couple of years watching and marveling at Trevor Hoffman, it's become a very pleasant ritual for them to mob their closer after games. Last year, after breaking the all-time record, a couple of years earlier, number 400. And appropriately enough, this opportunity comes against a team that has not only been San Diego's biggest rival since the beginning of time, but a team that has walked in lockstep with San Diego atop the division and a team against whom Trevor has saved more games than any other club in baseball. Yep. And Hoffman's the leader of this club. And he's got the most tenure of anybody on that bench. Oh, filthy, nasty changeup swung on and missed. And it looks like he's feeling it tonight. He's done it a variety of ways. He's been a power pitcher. Learned to throw that change up. And that's the one pitch that guys just haven't seen to master. Hitting is that change. And it's just been fun to watch. Came to this organization as a young player, kind of green, not knowing anything about closing, and one of the hardest workers I think anybody's ever seen around here. And on the verge of getting his 500 saves, so. A ball and two strikes to count to Russell Martin. 500 saves for Trevor Hoffman. He's going to have a plaque right next to yours in Cooperstown someday, Mr. Gwynn. Padres have made a habit of this walk-off ceremony. In front of 31,541 fans, Trevor Hoffman has saved his 500th Major League ball game. The Bruce uh, Bruce Suiters and Lee Smiths of the world, Tony, ever envisioned anybody racking up 500 of these things? I don't think so. You know, and it's not an easy feat. But you know, as I said, he's been consistent from the beginning. I mean, you know, averaging about 35, 36 saves a year. A couple of arm surgeries to come back from. 
just truly amazing. I've seen 500 saves. 500 saves for the former uh, minor league shortstop with the Cincinnati That's Reds. Correct. That ain't bad. Steve Quist is standing by with Trevor Hoffman. All right, thank, thank you very much, guys. Trevor Hoffman, man, it never gets old watching you do this. Your thoughts on another milestone. Already the all-time saves leader. Now you have 500 raising the bar, going someplace no one else has ever gone. Well, I'll be honest with you, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be a part of it, but uh, you know we're in the middle of a pennant race in June, and uh, you can feel the electricity in the stands. I understand my place with the uh, milestones, but uh, we're happy to be a game and a half up, I think. What's the bigger number for you, the fact that you saved 500 or the fact you've saved 500 of 558 chances? That's an 89.6% clip. You're really starting to split hairs. The bottom line <laughs> is all I've ever cared about is preserving a win for my ball club. We have uh, one last goal, one more goal left, and that's to put a ring on our finger. Yeah, I think your teammates want to get it. Look, they've already got that thing set up. Let's see it real quick. As, I can, as you can see, my teammates don't know what size head I got. I got a six and seven eighths, a little small, but uh, no, in all honesty, it's a pleasure. It's an honor to be a part of a select group of relievers. Um, closers get a lot of the, the accolades, but it's, as you know, been a tremendous effort by the whole team and my bullpen that's done an unbelievable job for us all year up to this point. It seems like the stars have been aligned for you. Here you get 500 against the rival Dodgers. You got the record-breaking save against Pittsburgh, the final home game of the season. I mean, you can't write this stuff, can you? Well, I'm not real good at writing scripts, but it's been pretty good so far. Um, you know, it's just, again, it's uh, great to be able to be competing at this level. Um, the Dodgers showed up every day that uh, I've ever faced them, and they didn't uh, let us let us down tonight. They're, they're great competitors. We're happy to uh, keep competing. I understand you keep most, if not all, of the balls. Where does number 500 go? Uh, it's going to go east about 2,500 miles uh, in the place that it belongs in Cooperstown. Cooperstown, yeah. Do you celebrate? How do you celebrate? You know, you take a deep breath. You enjoy the moment tonight. But, you know, in baseball, you don't get a lot of opportunities to reflect on the things you've done. And, um, I'm going to go inside with my teammates. I'm going to join my family. We're going to celebrate a little bit, but uh, tomorrow's another day, and we want to get another win. Quickly, do you want to say anything to the fans who've seen a majority of your saves? It's been a long time, hasn't it? It's, uh, it's been an absolute honor to put on this Padre uniform and perform in front of you all. I know we got off to a bit of a rocky start in 93 when I came over for a guy by the name of Gary Sheffield, but I hope I've been able to... Uh, Prove the doubters and honor you guys well in the city of San Diego for my, my effort. Oh, you certainly have. We appreciate it. Thanks. Trevor Hoffman, save 500. Before you go, Trevor, turn around and check out the board up there. Got a special presentation on behalf of the Padres. A look back at 500 saves.
two strikes to count to Russell Martin. 500 saves for Trevor Hoffman. A stirring video tribute to the all-time closer, Trevor Hoffman. 500 saves as a part of a Padre win downtown tonight as San Diego has taken the first two in the series with the Dodgers. Let the bells ring now and forever. Tony and I are back with a look at the final line score. So much more to come. Do stay with us. We're back right after this. Final game summary tonight brought to you by Murray Lampert Construction. Stay tuned for the Murray Lampert plays of the game coming up in just a little bit. San Diego has taken the first two in the series with the Dodgers. They have even the season series with L.A. at 4-4 four and four after a 5-2 to two win for Greg Maddox tonight. Maddox, for his part, improves to 5-3 and three in defeating Randy Wolf. Trevor Hoffman, save number 18 this season, is number 500 for his career. So many stories, and uh, John Weisbarth and Bob Scanlon are standing by for the Lexus postgame show to really get into the meat of it tonight. Padres win it by a final of 5-2. to two. Stay tuned. The Lexus postgame show is coming up next.